the setup has changed. The last time I tried to turn on the outboard end, some time ago, this adapter, it's not really an adapter, it's an extension to get the chuck away from this and this, and it's also the bearing retainer. It's got four set screws, this is the old one, it wouldn't go straight. This one Laguna sent me under warranty. I just installed it, tried it on both ends. It spins true. My Vicmark 120 chuck holds my 6 inch jaws, which holds this once turned black walnut bowl that my friend Russ Williams gave me. When turning outboard, I have to turn in reverse because reverse is forward with respect to the threads. That is, this will not unscrew. This means I have to move my lathe out from the uh, normal position so I can get behind here to work. You glue it on. Apply wood and I will leave that on there. It sits in the bottom of the jaws rather than on the uh, tops, but that's okay. I'm just going to leave it there. Turn the outside, turn the inside, sand it, and then take it out of here, figure out how I'm going to get the plywood off. That plywood glue block is dated August 1996, almost 28 years ago. Now what's tricky about this is working from the back side, figuring out where all the buttons are. Now, one disadvantage of this setup is my dust extractor is clear over there. So I'll be wearing a mask or my trend air shield. I don't know the name of the original turner of this bowl. It's almost 28 years old. Russ Williams, a friend from my wood turning club, gave it to me. He got it from another club member who got it from the widow of another member who had passed before my time. I think I'll start with the three quarters. This is an extremely wide foot. I'm going to bring that in some. Right around 600 RPM. And this thing is 15 inches across, 15 into 9,000. Yeah, 600 RPM is all you want for a 15 inch bowl using the 9,000 rule. I will have to wear a mask. This is very dry, it's going to be dusty. Opportunity to wear my new RZ mask. speed of 550, but that'll be close enough. Five forty-five, top speed. Right in the face. With chips and dust flying right square in my face, it was time to put on a face shield.
Okay, this steams up when I'm wearing this mask. The uh, dust is excessive. I'm going to run the fan. I will use my air shield as soon as I get the wood chips out of it. The picture is not as sharp as it should be because dust is settling on the face of the camera. Okay, that began to spin off because after I shut the power off, I put it in forward for the braking action, and the braking action with this heavy bowl is too much. So I just gotta watch it spin down naturally. Or just slow it gently with a hand wheel. Adjusting the tool rest on the outboard extension is not quite as simple as it is normally. I had to leave out a lot of this because my head was right square in the middle of the frame. Perhaps that's just as well. This took a long time. We'll move right along. The battery on the air shield ran out, so I put it on the charger and went back to the mask. I moved the camera to get the best angle I could with the setup I have. And now back to work. Moisture content of this 28-year-old blank is right at 7.5%. It's hard, dry, and dusty. What I need now is a different tool rest. What I need to do is get rid of this center post. Not sure why this was left in here. Try my half inch scraper. If that doesn't feel like it's up to it. Well, uh, motor carbide. This was slow going. So I switched to a carbide detail gouge. Gouge? A detail carbide. Anyway, it's got a sharp point. Digs deep with little effort. And then back to the scraper. It was still slow going. Okay, gonna have to do something different here. That is like uh, trying to cut rock. You now you might be asking, why don't I just put a forcer bit on there? There's no way to do that. I could drill it full of holes, make it like a Swiss cheese. The magnetic stop sign holds the spindle lock in position and prevents me from turning on the power. Here we go down to... Not quite to the blue tape.
That's what I like to see. I considered for several minutes whether this is wise hammering an object that is on the spindle, but between the mass of the bowl and the mass of that chuck and the small chisel, I figured it wasn't doing any damage. Well, this is a little like chicken concrete with a soup spoon. I used a scraper to clean up the stump. Almost to the bottom, but boy, I do not like using scrapers on this. 89 millimeters, 111. There's 20 millimeters there, better three quarters of an inch. I'm going to have to turn the speed up some. Now that we're done with rough work, okay, right now at the rim, 18 millimeters, 19. I would like to finish this entirely before getting serious on the inside. Too many knobs to turn for a simple folk. Hey, darling. On this piece I'm trying very hard not to settle for that's pretty good instead going for the very best I can do. I've reached the limit of travel on my overhead camera boom so I'll skip through a lot of this until I get the second camera up. There's gonna be an awful lot of sanding on this. There's just no way around that, but I need to get more out of the bottom and I need to get closer because even with these heavy gouges, I'm feeling a lot, a lot of bounce. So I'm going to try right on the end of the rest. I think I can start there. Can I come back anymore? The rim of the bowl does not clear the banjo, which makes setting the tool rest a little bit difficult. Yes, I think so. This will turn. Clearing the banjo by a millimeter or maybe two. Now, does this allow me to get... I fiddled around with the banjo and the extension and the tool rest a little more. And now, the five-eighths, I can get in here and go all the way across, I think. Get rid of my hat, get my mask back on, see if we can finish this up. Still running 800 RPM. Thank <laughs> you. 
I turned the fan on, didn't I? Okay, I've got to get a little lower on this. Not much lower because I don't want the post to hit the bowl. Still got quarter inch clearance there. Still got my millimeter or two under there. Oh, that's still more than an inch there, three quarters there. Rapidly tapers to a hump there. So I got to come in here a little bit more. That little hump's got to come off. But we've still got three quarters of an inch at the bottom. About five eighths up here, I think. Yeah, almost five eighths. I need to take this out. It's more on the outside though, but I'm not gonna change all this around right now just for that. Okay, fan this time. Fan mask. Check the bottom with a short straight edge. That's about as close as I can get it with a gouge. But before I use a scraper, I have to lower the tool rest just a little. The extra outboard arm between banjo and tool rest gives plenty of springboard action. This is, I don't think I want to make anything bigger than this on this lathe. There's a ridge there. Okay, I'll try this and then I'm done. Using a one inch round scraper. That did a reasonably decent job. Now for sanding, I'm going to put this back over by the exhaust fan. Maybe not completely over there, but at least in that general area.
Must be nice to have a shop where everything could be in a fixed position. But I don't. Asking yourself, how am I going to get this off of here? I don't know. I'm referring to the plywood glue block. Get in here. Thank you. Send these to sheet at first. We get some semblance of a, a shape. Then we'll switch to the power sand. See if 120 will do it. We got to go from it. It'll stay on here. It's 324. Okay, I'm not going to subject you to any more of this. 400 grit, finishing up here. I spent some time spot sanding areas that just didn't look right. I burnished the wood with shavings. Well, this one's done. All I have to do now is turn off the damn fan. So we can hear ourselves think here. All I have to do now is figure out how to get this off and finish up the bottom. But that is not something I'm going to do today. I think we've got a very nice bowl here. It was late in the day and I was getting tired. I'd turn off that glue block the next day. What I need is a little bit of a spacer here. Make a six inch disc of eight inch, eight inch masonite, put that in there. Sides a little high. Don't know why. I loosened the chuck, adjusted the bowl to what looked right in the jaws, and tightened them again. Okay. Acceptable. I had to roll the lathe away from the table again to give myself room to work on the back side. Just like that. Oh, that's right. Damn it. The tool rest, or the banjo has to go on before this. And it's heavy.
looks like this is going to work. Of course, we're operating on the assumption here that that is, of course, it is it's glued to the entire blank. It's not rim glued to the hot, hot good gun, the way we tend to do it now. Here's that little mark I just made. The closer I looked at the bowl, the more minor imperfections I could see. As much as I didn't want to, I decided to sand some more. I'm going to do the outside of 4 and 600. plan is to go in here to get a little bit convex, not convex, concave. About 600. I switched to a wider parting tool for the greater strength. I was working pretty far out over the rest and was becoming increasingly uncomfortable. There's the situation. Too close to the end of the tool rest. Don't know for sure what's in here. I've got a, a foot established. So what I'm going to do is cut that off the saw. Too much for spindle lock. There was too much play in the spindle lock, so I used the indexing lock instead. And I attached my magnetic stop sign in front of the controls so I don't turn the thing on while it's locked up. Okay, here it is. Got a lot of chiseling and sanding to do. That took oh, only about 10 minutes. Good saw. Cheap. But good. Okay, now I have to put this down on something soft. Once again, I take pleasure in using the mallet I made in junior high school. This is going to take a while. Keep an eye on that glove, make sure it stays in place. That took a little more than one hour.
Okay, I'm going to switch to sanding, starting with 60. Everything inside this outer half inch, mostly here in the middle first. As I'm sure you can imagine, this too took quite a while. I marked almost the entire thing for yet more sanding. Finally, finally, we are clear. all of that was 60 grit. Now we start with 80 and work up. I power sanded through 320 and touched up rough spots and spots near the edge that I missed, starting with 180 up through 320. And then sanded the entire bottom with the grain. Okay, up to 320 on the bottom, 600 everywhere else. Looks like we've got some uh, marks here. And of course, I found a few very small defects that I touched up with 400 and 600. Don't know what all these little defects are from. Probably from just handling the thing and bumping it into things. But I'm going to keep looking for those, fixing those, make this bowl as nice as I can. Probably no one in the world would notice this stuff but me, or you, assuming you're a fellow turner. Okay, don't bump this on anything, don't have to do this again. I am going to wipe dust off with denatured alcohol. I might require sanding again tomorrow, which I will do lightly with 600 and be done. Okay, that's it. I could wait a little while and then put on tried and true, but I'm tired. What is that? When you put on the alcohol, you discover things. Now this looks like a knife cut. And it comes a time when you just got to stop. Oops, just hit it with my fingernail, that no doubt put another mark in it. Sometimes you just got to stop. And that for me is right now. We're going to finish on this tomorrow. And there it is the next day. It was smooth after the application of alcohol. So I am going to... This is a salad bowl intended to be used as a salad bowl. So I will treat it, I think, tried and true original. And I'll apply it with relatively clean stuff, right? I use these stop loss bags to keep air off it so it'll last forever.
doesn't take very much. I've probably got way too much already. Take this back on without letting air in. Put on some glasses so I can see what I'm doing. No, no, I don't have too much. A lot of it's going into the scotch brake. But you don't need a lot. You see it everywhere. It is everywhere. What I've been told by people who should know. I've never used a scotch brake for an applicator like this before. But I've seen it recommended. So I thought I'd give it a try. Now how am I going to do the rest of it? Well, I'll just flip it over. Do the rest of it. For the back, clean up the rim. Set this on a bucket of some kind. Almost the same amount of surface here. Start right there. This stuff is one coat and you're done. Two coats if you like. I think I've got it all covered. Set it on this. because I probably abraded a lot of that off of here when it was upside down. Make sure I've got an even distribution. End grain does take up more than the side grain. There's no surprise there. This might get a second coat. Now this sits for a few hours, between one and eight hours. Pretty cool down here, so I think we'll go to the high side of that. And, uh, and wipe it down and you're done unless you want to put on another you'll see then okay that's it for an hour or so or two or three or tomorrow well that one was a struggle from beginning to end but the result was worth it the bowl is just over 13 inches in diameter four and a quarter inches high, and the walls and bottom are approximately five-eighths of an inch thick. I have two coats of tried and true on there. After it cures a few days, I might add another. Thanks for watching.